So let's continue solving examples using Gauss's law. Now in the previous lecture we were able to find the electric field inside and outside a solid sphere that had a uniform and continuous charge density. Now we're going to try to determine the electric field inside a solid sphere of non-uniform charge density and we're going to use Gauss's law. Now, suppose that we have a solid sphere that has an electric charge that is distributed unevenly and non-uniformly. Now, the charge density is given by the Greek symbol rho. Now, by definition, the charge density rho for a solid three-dimensional sphere is given by taking the charge and dividing that by the volume. Now let's suppose for this particular case our density, the charge density, is equal to sigma multiplied by r squared where sigma is simply a constant. So we see as the radius increases our charge density also increases. So the charge density is largest on the outermost edge of our solid sphere. Now in part A, we want to find our sigma in terms of the total charge given by Q. So let's suppose this entire solid three-dimensional sphere has a charge of Q and a radius given by R0. So we essentially need to do part A in order to do part B. So let's begin with part A. So in the first step, we essentially want to divide our solid sphere into thin concentric shells of thickness given by dr, so infinitely small thickness dr. One such example of a concentric shell is shown in the following diagram. This particular example has a radius given by r and a thickness given by dr. Now the surface area of this three-dimensional shell is given by multiplying 4 pi multiplied by r squared. And if we multiply the surface area of this particular shell and multiply the surface area by our thickness dr, well that will give us our volume. And because our thickness is infinitely small, the volume will also be infinitely small. So remember, for this part, for part A, we want to es essentially find our charge in terms of our density. So to find the charge of this particular concentric shell, we have to take the density of that shell and multiply the density by the volume and that will give us the charge. So for this particular case, to find the charge of this particular concentric shell, we multiply the volume by our density. Now to find the total uh, to find the total charge of this entire region, we simply have to integrate, sum up all the charges of all these different concentric shells. So, the total charge of this entire figure is equal to Q, which is equal to the integral of the product of our density and our volume. So, density times volume gives us the charge. Now, we can replace our density with our sigma multiplied by r squared because remember, we want to find sigma in terms of q. So we want to get rid of our density and plug in sigma multiplied by r squared. Now, from this step, we know the volume of one such concentric shell is equal to the product of the surface area and dr. So, we replace dv with this quantity and we get the following result. And now we integrate beginning at our zero point at the center of the solid sphere and ending at the edge. So, ending at our radius r naught. So, zero to r naught and we integrate this whole guy. Now notice we can bring out our constants and we have 4 pi sigma. We integrate r to the fourth power dr from 0 to r naught. So we actually integrate, we evaluate our integral and we get 4 pi sigma r naught to the fifth power divided by 5 is equal to the total charge q 
found on this solid three-dimensional sphere. Now, we take this equation, we rearrange it, and we solve for our sigma. So, sigma is equal to 5 multiplied by q divided by 4 pi r naught to the fifth power. So, that completes part A. We essentially found sigma in terms of our total charge Q. This will become important in step B. In step B, calculate the electric field at points inside our sphere. So, we want to use Gauss's law. And to use Gauss's law, we have to choose a certain region. So, let's suppose we want to find the electric field at points on the surface of the sphere with radius r as shown in the following diagram. So, we choose a certain sphere inside our solid sphere and that chosen sphere is shown by the green outline. So, this is our three-dimensional sphere. It has a radius given by r naught. Now, in the first part of this question, we have to essentially calculate what is the charge that is enclosed in this green spherical region that we chose. That will become important when we find the electric field. So, let's suppose our charge enclosed is given by Q enclosed and that is equal to, well, we have to integrate. Remember, to find a charge, we take the volume and multiply it by the density. So, the charge enclosed in this particular region is equal to the integral of our density multiplied by dV from 0 to r, where r is the radius of this spherical region. Now, we can replace our density with simply sigma r squared multiplied by dv, where dv is simply this quantity. So, we replace that as shown. Now, we replace our sigma with this equation because we want to essentially replace our density with our charge. So, we get the following result and now we can bring all our constants to the other side. We can integrate and we get the following result. So, we see that the charge enclosed inside this green spherical region is equal to the product of the total charge given by Q multiplied by R to the fifth where R is the radius of this chosen sphere divided by R naught to the fifth where R naught is the radius of this entire solid sphere. So, we hold on to this for just a moment. Now, we apply Gauss's law. So, we chose our region and now we apply our law. So, the net electric flux according to Gauss's law is equal to the closed integral of the dot product of the electric field and our infinitely small area A. Now, notice because of symmetry of this chosen sphere, the electric field at every single point on this green surface is exactly the same and it's perpendicular to that surface and it points in the same direction as dA. So, that means the angle between vector dA and vector E will be zero. Now, by definition of the dot product, our dot product E dA is equal to the product of the magnitude of E, the magnitude of dA, and the cosine of the angle theta. Now, the angle theta between these two is zero, so cosine of zero is one. So, this simply becomes the following result. Now, notice we took out the electric field E because it's constant at every single point on this green region. Remember, we're calculating the electric field on this green region. So, we bring that out, we get this result, we integrate, and we get E multiplied by A, the surface area given by 4 pi r squared, where r is the radius of this chosen region, and by Gauss's law, that is equal to the charge enclosed in that region divided by epsilon naught. Now, from this part, we know the charge enclosed 
is equal to this quantity. So we replace the charge enclosed with this equation and then we solve for our electric field. And we see that the electric field inside a solid sphere of non-uniform charge density is equal to the product of the total charge Q multiplied by R to the third power divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by R naught raised to the power of 5.